So, Larry, this first piece sure. Sure. Uh, you said is waiting for Shadmir. Is that how you say that? Waiting for Shadmir? Yeah. Shadmire? Shadmir? Shadmir? Shadmir. M E. Like M E R. Yeah. I forgot how to spell it a long time ago. <laughs> I just made up a name. Um, the, this painting, I, I just did it for myself. And um, Keith Parkinson um, is an artist that worked with me at TSR. He was very young, the youngest one of us. And um, he asked me, he, he said, we should go to Gen Con. So we had to go to Gen Con anyway, because uh, we work for TSR. But he said, let's get a booth and let's do a painting and uh, make prints of it and sell prints. I said, that's a good idea. So he did a painting and I did a painting. And this is the one I did. And um, we didn't think about taking TSR art to make prints. <laughs> we think it's something totally new. Mm -hmm. And so I did this for the fun of it. Um, this one, all these paintings has got glare on them, I know, because the lights there really, uh, the guy operating the lights at Alexcon, he really beamed the lights on them. It looked good. Um, if you stood to a little bit of angle, but it, it's very hard to this, you know, the, all these paintings have some glare on them, you know, yeah. uh, even when I tried to photograph them. But yeah, this oil painting, it's, um, you can see the size of it sort of by me. Yeah. Just standing and um, it was done, um, um, I would guess around 80, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, 80, 80 Eight, something like 87 something mm -hmm. like so it's one of the older paintings i've got here from my um, days when i was working at tsr and you were telling me originally that this um became a character for a role-playing game then well the, the guy shadowmer became a character <laughs> the guy behind uh, the the um... no it was the guy that's not seen the guy they're waiting on they're waiting for shadowmer oh. so, so he was sort of a mystery and so Later on, there's, um, um, I think, uh, Margaret Weiss and stuff. Uh, anyway, we created some kind of a, a, a role-playing game. Mm -hmm. And she was writing some about it, and she wanted to use Shadowmere in it. I did a big painting, uh, another painting, which I sold a long time ago. I've, I've got images of it. This guy on a horse with a lamps and everything he's a barbarian but a big long spear and we named it Shadowmere and uh, and so we finally get to see what Shadowmere looks like years later <laughs> <laughs> so this one came first oh, and yeah. you had no idea what Shadowmere, Shadowmere looked like fictitious person um, why are they uh, waiting on him I don't know it's just uh maybe they're entering I, I like to do things that makes you think exactly that Mm -hmm. I like things that you like make up your own story. To me, they've been on a journey and supposed to maybe hook up with him, um, or he's supposed to lead them through these new lands they're on the edge of. And um, anyway, they're supposed to meet him, and they're waiting, waiting for him to show up. And then mm -hmm. I don't know if he leads them on into a, a, another land or something. I don't know. That's just he leads story. them on an adventure. I mean, she's got that spear. Yeah. You yeah. were talking a little bit about the spear and um, she almost appears to have war paint. You know, she's got face paint well, on. This little guy behind her? Yeah. You know, yeah. No, nah, he's just a, he's not Shadowmere. He's just a, a little creature of some type. I uh, I love making up these little, little guys, uh, male and female, um, that you don't have a name for them. They're humans, noids or human types. But they're like, uh, you know, in D and D, there's uh, dwarves and elves, or in fantasy, there's all these creatures and hobbits and everything else. Yeah. And, uh, I like to make up little characters. That's, uh, uh, I don't know, just uh, they're fun to draw and paint. You're free to do whatever you want to with them, their faces or anything. And like, if I'm mistaken, I think he's only got three fingers and a thumb. So he doesn't have a full five fingers, I don't think. I'm trying to look at the, at the mm -hmm. painting. Mm -hmm. So just little changes, just uh, 
you get a little bit more um, non-human look about him. But well, I'm fascinated by her, though, because she yeah. looks like a huntress. She looks like a yeah. warrior. And well, he kind of looks uh, like her companion. Maybe he's yeah. carrying her food and and some he supplies. Her, yeah, he could be carrying stuff and she's got to stay ready to fight, you know, so he might be carrying supplies. Um, they might know each other from a long time past. Uh, he I would say he lived in deeper, darker woods. She mm -hmm. might live edge of village or something um and um um they know each other you might not these creatures like him the little guy uh you might not see them very often they might be very shy they have to get to know a person and trust them maybe i don't know it's just i just like to make up stuff about them you know uh, and well, at least stories and, and, and gaming and um, what's so neat about role-playing games for those who haven't played you start a game and you don't know where it's going to go and if you got a good person running the game very creative person you can go on great adventures because he can't even he or she that's running a game can't he's always got to stay ahead of the players since the players are very creative the, 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 the guy running the, the the game master has got to really stay on his toes to to stay ahead of them, and it can go any place. The game is just pure fantasy and imagination, and it can go in any direction. And you create a big story. And a lot of people has written books over their adventures, gaming over a whole, um, uh, or maybe a five year period of one big journey. Cool. They've written books about it and and published books, everything else. So it really gets the imagination going. Very and to cool. me. It's all about imagination. Uh, that's why I do fantasy art. <clears throat> I like to um, make up stuff, you know, things that's not real or things that could be real or mm -hmm. things that may not ever be real. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the fun part about it. It's free. Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how about our next one? Okay. This one had a lot of oh, glare, but glare. I love yeah. the story in it. Yeah, it has a lot of glare, but I have some shots of it um, close up that I'm yeah. going to put in. So this one has your gentleman trying to lure the young couple into a dark alleyway. And there seems to be a werewolf hiding behind the corner. What's I the title I, of this one? Uh, oh, take a second. Uh, It'll come to me in a minute. See, like I told you, I know the name of this, but right now I can't think of it. Um, well, tell um, us about this one and it'll come okay. later or you the, can email it to me. Yeah. The, the, uh, the characters in the painting, well, this was done for TSR for a game cover of, of uh, I think, Cities of Mystery. And, um, and uh, myself, Keith Parkinson, another artist that worked at TSR and Bill Willingham he's another artist that used to work at TSR well Keith and I had went freelance and stopped working for TSR but they still gave us contract work and so Keith and Bill Willingham and myself shared a studio in downtown Lake Geneva and um the guy on the left is sort of luring people in is Bill Willingham, the the <laughs> monster knoll or whatever that is back there. I, I used to know the name of the creature from the Dungeons and Dragons. But anyway, Keith Parkinson posed for that. And I said, well, now I need uh, uh, to get a couple of characters. Um, I had the idea on my mind what I would paint. And where our studio was, it was it had been a storefront, so there's big windows in the front. Mm -hmm. We were back there. Well, it was a big room, but we was back close to the back working, and we could see people staring in. And this couple, uh, Legion E was a tourist town in the summer, a lot of tourists. And we mm -hmm. saw this couple staring, looking in, see what kind of a shop it was. <laughs> it, it was just a studio. And um, I think Bill or Keith once said, there's your couple right there. So I ran to the door and stopped them and told them it was an art studio. And I said, would you like to be in a painting? They go, sure. And so we threw a cape on them and gave them some swords. I took a quick reference shot of them. And then, so those, that couple, I guess they never knew they'd been 
really in a painting. I don't think they've been really... immortalized. I would want to know yeah. that. That is I awesome. I don't, they, I don't know if they got married. I think they were dating at that time. I don't. I don't have a clue. But uh, uh, oh. I wish if they... you're watching, yeah. And who if, are you we want yeah. to know <laughs> yeah. hey, i'd like to know uh, but that was that was a painting it was um it was um it's a fun painting to do but it was difficult to um it, was, it had to be dark mm -hmm. and, but getting colors to work inside this uh, barn or whatever these villains are at they're gonna try to i don't know if you can see it but and the guy on the left, he's holding a chain, and right where the glare is at is a jewel, jewel on the chain, and he's mm. trying to lure him in like he's got something to sell him or something, you know. Mm. And get him in there. The big guy by the door is going to uh, mug him. So, um, um, <laughs> so that's yeah, you can't see it in here, but it's. And then the straw in the bottom of the of the um, um, the floor there where you're pointing. Floor, yeah, that was uh, yeah. I was probably talking about that there. That part was was really hard to do. I mean, I didn't know for sure I was going to do it because I've um, I, I grew up in the country and always run farm. And we didn't have a farm, but we lived out in the country mm -hmm. and uh, been in a lot of in and out of a lot of old barns and. Uh, um uh, and uh the inside the stalls in the barn it's just oh you know dirt and straw and manure and everything all ground in together it's just <laughs> dark and got some color to it I'm like how am sounds, i gonna put that you know sounds so, so appealing oh i know it's just how <laughs> it is in a, in a in a regular old barn stall now some of these mm -hmm. kentucky thoroughbreds i think their stalls look better than a penthouse you know so clean. <laughs> mm -hmm. carpet. but back to just regular old farmhouses and especially back in like the middle ages or something the stalls and stuff would have been pretty dirty and muddy and um that was that was fun to do it it worked eventually i had to fiddle with it a little bit and but then it started coming together and uh this is a painting that that we've kept like the first one you saw mm -hmm. we're keeping this one because the sentimental thing about it, I, I painted Bill and and um, and I did paint Keith in another painting or two, but um, those have been sold. Um, one of them I was never going to sell, but these collectors offered me so much money. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't say no, huh? You know, but now I'm older and and everything, I can say no. But back then, I was just starting out. I, you know, I was probably in my late 30s and mm -hmm. uh, trying to get a career going. So when these big collectors want to buy, I'm like, sure, I'll sell it. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. Just trying to get ahead and you know, yeah. make a living. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah isn't that the name of the game? That is. Just trying to, my whole goal in life was um, to um, paint and make a living that's it you know take care of my wife and children my wife always worked mainly for insurance purposes because mm. uh, as a freelancer you're pretty screwed when it comes to insurance you know <laughs> and, right um, because they will they will tear you up financially because you have no protection they can do what they want to do so my wife worked and um uh and then i, I painted and um, somehow I was just thinking the other day, since I got out of college, I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, supposed to went to Pratt to get a master's a scholarship, but I got drafted oh. like two weeks after I got out of, out of college. I, was oh, drafted. I knew it was going to happen. For and, Vietnam? Um, yeah, but it was going on then, but I spent my first... Um, uh, year at Fort Knox as an illustrator, mm. and uh, then I spent my second year in Germany, uh, which I could see castles and old villages. I took a lot of photos, just absorbed it, and went to Alps. We'll travel over Europe while I was there. And um, but I realized since the day I got out of college, the only jobs I've ever had, I mean, real 
full-time job has been an illustrator, an artist. That's and fantastic. I, I was thinking, I, I, I just had a few jobs between years at college, you know, you know to, to earn some money for college. But other than that, once I got out, my job has been to draw and paint my whole life long. That's fantastic. I, know, I was a lot luckier than I dreamed I would be. Um, Oh, this so glare. this one has glare, but yeah. maybe you could send us if you've unpacked these, maybe you could send me um, a nice picture of them. I do have close up of this one that I'm going to share, which shows okay. the water. I've got, I've got files of these high res files. <gasps> and uh, that'd be always, awesome. And uh, I'll add I them in. Send them to you because um, I've got prints on most of these. Um, now this was a this one was one I sold. Um, um, but I've had it for years. I like the painting, and uh, and actually, I um, a friend of mine, the guy in the painting, the Thor character, um, that was a friend of mine. The one I said I worked on. Uh, he's a mechanic. To work, he built expensive high end street rods. Mm -hmm. Cars. And he'd worked on several for me, but we were buddies and he wouldn't charge me much, which was good back then. I didn't have that much money, but uh, uh, I don't know, we, he'd do it for me. And nice. all these years, um, uh, and we'd be good friends. So when, when I got, uh, when I had to do this painting, it was for a video game, I don't know, years ago, but anyway, uh, after I got it done, I thought, I'm going to give this painting to him because he's uh, um, always um, helped me and stuff. So um, um, I, get, he, I, I give it to him. So he's had it all these years, but now he's in pretty uh, physically bad health. His back's mm. gone. All of that's from lifting weights and working, lifting engine blocks and everything. He was very Oof. strong. And um, so a lot of physical things has really happened to him. And, uh, and um, uh, I told him, I said, well, I could probably sell that painting I gave you for pretty good money. And uh, he said, well, I could use it. So I sold that painting. I took it to Lexicon and sold it for him. And he got a good price out of it. And it really helps him out. And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and make a, a really nice print and get it framed. And give him a print of it so we can still see himself the way he used to be you know <laughs> that's nice i it's a beautiful piece the water in it is just amazing and he's oh. fighting this yeah. serpent and the splashes a lot of people are like well you didn't those don't look like real waves so much and i said well you know they really weren't meant to i mean they're waves but uh, they're more of a design element um mm. If you notice the waves, they, the the two big waves, the one on the right and one on the left, yeah, uh, they sort of hold your eye right in the sweet spot. They're like a basket. Your eye just yeah. travels around and back up to the hammer. So it was all to really keep your eyes right in that that area. So uh, the waves are a little bit overemphasized. They're more of a graphic effect than. Sort of yeah, like your leading lines in this piece keep the composition, keep you moving throughout yeah. the piece. It yeah. really Power. does. Just sort of keeps you in that sweet spot all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of an upside down triangle, you uh -huh. know, and the line of the dragon or the sea serpent staring yeah. right at him brings you right yeah. back to him all again and again. It's beautiful. That's and it's I... so aqua. Yeah, <laughs> it is. You know, I have a lot of people that wants, wants me to do a painting for them. And I've done a lot on um, um, commission pieces for uh -huh. private commission. And uh, lots of times, sometimes they want to design the painting. And uh, used to, I would um, let them design it. I mean, this is their painting. They do what they want to. But I realized that um, they don't have an eye for design, for balance and and uh, that's where you come in yeah, it's like you know i started i just stopped doing it. i said i'll take the characters you want i'll put them in the painting but let me design the thing you know i you know um 
they would have all the characters on one side and and nothing on the other. It was all off balance. There was no balance to it. Uh, I would have had to add, you know, a foot and a half of, of of painting on the right just to balance out what they had on the left or something. Mm-hmm. You know? But but you got to as an illustrator, you've got to think about. You can lead people in. You can lead the eye. You can make them look at what you want them to. Usually. Um, but under some, uh, sometimes when you're doing the covers of things, they want the main thing right here, and I've got a huge title goes across it, and so you do your best. <laughs> right, composition and, doesn't come naturally all the time. You have to be trained in it. I know. I was when I was in college. I was taking a design class, and she was going, out, you know, talking about balance and composition, all this kind of stuff. Well, I've never really thought about it that much i mean i was just we didn't have um art offered in my high school so i never had an art list in my life and i didn't know any artists so uh so i was in college i, I was listening to my instructor i'm like okay i'm learning something new so i was trying to do what she'd tell us i was trying to she'd have us to do just more abstract things or shapes but using balance and composition and um I would try to do what she, what I felt she was telling us to do. And I was getting C's and D's. And I'm like, God, I can't afford to fail an art class. So I thought, <laughs> okay, I want to forget what she, I, I sort of know what she's trying to say, but I'm just going to do it my way. Just mm-hmm. see what looks good to my eye. Well, then I started getting the A's. <laughs> and she said, now, see, you've learned a lot under me. I said, yes, I have. You know? <laughs> But it was just, it just come natural, you know, to, to I don't know. It's, yeah. Explain it. What I looks get it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. Okay. And then let's see here. This piece yeah. is your comic. And there's my bald head. I didn't realize <laughs> I had so much gone. You know, I could just shave it and let it go. I don't know. Nobody anyway, can see the back. You can't see the back of your head, so you don't worry about it. I know. I don't see it, but everybody else does. No one they say that's that old man going there. I see you need to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, for years when I was well, really the first year I started working at TSR, I was back in eighty two, I guess nineteen eighty two. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy that. Uh, uh, Oh my God, I know this guy in my life. There's another name I can think of. It'll probably come to me. I can see his face. I got a good vision when I can see his face. But he was the editor of Dragon Magazine. Mm. And they, they ran comic strips and uh, and um, just different things, cartoons, the articles, everything. It was a magazine. So he walks in and uh, in our little studio, us artists there, a room. And uh, he said, uh, we're going, we need a three page comic strip in Dragon Magazine. And we, it was uh, something new. We need three pages going to the very back of the magazine. And we're taking submissions all over the world. And I said, Can we submit it? He said, That's why I'm here to tell you, you can submit. And because we worked at TSR. And, and he, I said, Will you, will TSR own the rights to it? Or, you know, was the Dragon Magazine own the rights? He said, No, the art you do, you own the rights to it. You know, mm-hmm. so we're just using it. So I agreed to do it. He said, I need five pages of a comic strip. And he gave us a date, like a month or so away. And you can submit it. And uh, I love, uh, I like doing my own kind of comics. And this, uh, the comic strip I ran, it was, I come up with this little character and named him Snarf. Snarf. At that time, Snarf. I never heard any name, anything named that. Mm-hmm. And so, because the guy had this, the character had this sort of long snout, and I figured he sort of had this snarfy sound maybe when he spoke or something. But um, so I just created this continuing story adventure, and every three pages, uh, we published three pages at a time in Dragon. So it had to be something funny or crazy happen ever within that three page storytelling. And it was one continuing story as well. And um, I really enjoyed it because I love stories. When I was a kid, I loved, I'd get older people 
tell me stories. A lot of them, a lot of old country folks, they had a lot of imagination, creativity, and uh, and and they believed that you know the old devil could jump out and grab you right there in the woods. You know, it's uh, uh, there were fantasy or however you want to call it, just the fairy stories and stuff. Just yeah, almost seemed real. And living and, and I grew up a lot in heavy dark woods roam in the woods and play mm. and, and um so it just gives your imagination going and there's a lot of characters old characters old men that i met were characters themselves it was funny and <laughs> trusty old dudes and seen a lot and yeah um, i was just thinking the other day all these old people i remember when i was young if they were over 50 55 years old they had been born in the 1800s I'm like, wow. well, yeah, I mean, um, cool. So a lot of the stories and things they talk about riding old road wagons and trying to catch um, hogs would run wild. You had to watch out for them. Big hogs would uh, get bore loose, hogs, kill you, you know. Yeah, well, those go feral pretty quick. And, Did um, you ever roll any of these stories into Snarf or into your characters? Yeah, a lot, a lot of it. A lot of stupid events. <laughs> when you're a child, it came out in the comic strip, you know. Neat. That is um, so cool. It was fun doing it, and it, it caught on pretty quickly. Even though it's a comic strip, you'd have to read it, though. It wasn't just for kids. It was for adults, too. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't, uh, you know, back then, the editing, you had to really watch language. So I'd put, uh, I would add in little squiggly marks and stuff for certain words. <laughs> and you could yeah. feel your own words. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it was it was truly funny for people who actually read it. it you know, it wasn't does for, this still exist? Is there a book, an an anthology yeah, collection I'm, of the comics? I've had them all, but I'm so sold out. I printed about three times, um, and uh, and they fell out. Uh, collectors' items. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah they be collectors. Items. I have a few books left downstairs. This got up in my basement. We store a lot of stuff down there and books and everything. Um, I've got about five left that's got the whole really done nicely printed, real well hardback book of the complete story from the mm. time I started to the time I quit. And um, and so, um, yeah, well, there was, you know, over a thousand of those books or more. I don't know. We wow. ordered I more. They go good. I think it's incredible that you created this comic that became this ongoing uh, story and then it accumulated in a work. That's so cool. You know, it, it just yeah. goes to show the power was, of okay, chipping this, away at something and doing it again and again well, and again. Uh, this was for Dragon Magazine. They, I, I, after I did a few Dragon Magazine covers, I really liked it because well, the, 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 the art directors of the magazine would... Um, they knew if they give me freedom, they get a better painting. So, um, so it's a nice I, thing to have in a they would do is like give me the sort of what the next issue would be like, like a Halloween issue, uh, April okay. Fool issue, you know, or it's going to be about magical weapons or something. And so that's all they'd tell me. I could do anything I wanted to. Well, and the painting I'm pointing to on screen here. It was an April Fool's issue. You can't see it here, but uh, the glare right where the main stuff is at. But um, uh, the Snarf and and the other characters, and I thought they'd found gold, but it was fool's gold. There's a little guy hiding hiding back there with a bucket of paint, and he painted some rocks gold color. So, <laughs> so and it so it's fool's goal and that was the april fool issue and i got to do the cover um so on but i love doing and a lot of dragon magazine covers i did i've kept i've, I've sold a few uh, times when i got offered more money than i could refuse which way back in the early days wasn't that much money <laughs> it was then now it's not but it was then i wish i had them back but i've kept about uh I guess five or six of the Dragon magazine covers because since they gave you freedom and there's nobody telling you what to paint or how to paint it or looking over your shoulder, I did some of my better paintings for them. 
And, nice. uh, and so that's why even now I've, um, I've announced my Facebook and stuff. I'm stopping doing um, private contracts. I've got two left. The last one I'm doing is this, the client has let me do what I want to do, which is really yeah. good. And um, I'm not taking any more private contracts. And I've, um, I'm not really trying to get any um, um, commercial work. Uh, you don't I mean, have to. Yeah. That's really cool. That's and, so great uh, to be in that position. I just, I just want to paint my own stuff from now on out. And if I'm like my parents and, and a lot of my family, they live to be very old. And uh, I'm hoping I'm on the track for that. Fantastic. <laughs> the second one is also a comic, but it's your comic of a Lux Con. Well, this was the same characters in the Snarf Quest. Pat Wilshire, uh, that runs or owns, I guess both, um, Lux Con. Uh, I've known him for a long time. He called me up and said, would I like you to commission you to do a snarf quest drawing of some kind with the characters in it, and um, and I'm like, well, okay, and and um, and so I sit down and said, what kind of situation am I going to put them in? And I thought, you know, I'm going to be going to Luxicon in about two three months. It's happening, so I just did it like the characters were somehow got to a Luxicon. Luxcon, and uh, we're all in there sort of you know, doing their thing. And uh, so when I did this and sent it to him, he really, really liked it. And uh, and um, his wife brought it down uh, for me to hang that day uh, when I was hanging the show. And, Neat. Uh, it's yeah. a great compliment to the one above it. Yeah, they, yeah, they both <clears throat> some of the same characters. Yeah. Yeah, you so, can see that up there better now. The one above it, yeah. So the next piece is a witch riding on a dragon. Her hair is all crazy, flying up in the air, and the dragon. And then there's a little boy and a dinosaur. It's yeah. a very interesting piece because it kind of speaks to imagination. What What's the story behind this piece? All right, I'll tell you the story. But first, I'm looking at this big picture, and there's me. I'm looking like the little guy that was in that first painting you with that. <laughs> As I get older, I'm starting to look like a, one of my own characters I've made up. <laughs> Well, marvelous. you show up as, <laughs> as the um, tavern keeper in one of these pieces just a little uh, while on here. Well, the, the painting you're talking about, um, it was is a book. And had some of the biggest writers at that time, or some big ones, writing stories as an anthology. Uh, I know, um, uh, I think uh, Isaac Asimov did a story in it. Uh, oh, wow. Um, what's her name? Dragons, the Dragons of Pern. Um, mm. And uh, McCaffrey. I used to read McCaffrey. her. I read all yeah. of hers as a little girl growing she, up. She had a, a, a story in it. There was several stories. And they wanted me to the cover for it. I'm like, God, you know, do I pick a story or what? So I decided to put pieces of several stories in one painting. Oh, and, neat. And the little boy there that posed, he was my son. He's now 42. So that was him back uh, when he's about five or six, about five, four or five. So I'd, I'd get him to pose, my, get my children to pose for me some and my wife some. The girl in the painting with the wild hair, she worked at the post office across the street in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. She was, she's very pretty, but she, you know, before um, tattoos were popular and all the stuff we do now, we're talking about the 80s. <laughs> um, she had, um, I think, a little tattoo and she had a little ring in her nose and this dark mm -hmm. hair. And she was like exotic. It was she was intimidating, put it that way. And Keith and I worked, our studio was just across the street, basically from the post office. And I had to paint this. I said, you know, I know the model we need to get for this, I need to get is, is that girl that works at post office. And he says, yeah, she's beautiful. I said, why don't you go ask her to model for it? She said, oh, no, you go ask her to model for it. So we debated back and forth. I think we flipped a corner or something that I lost. So I had to go. Ask her to model for it. 
And I thought, if she says no, she just might come around and beat the crap out of me or something. I don't know. I didn't know her. Then uh, I didn't want to embarrass her or anything or, or come off sounding weird. But I mean, back then I was I was close to her age. I wasn't that much older than her, maybe four or five years. And um, not even that much. So I go to the post office. She's working the window that day. So I had to wait in line with other people. I thought, like, this is stupid. I'm not mailing anything. I'm just going up to the window to talk to her. And so she, so I got up there and she looked at me and I said, uh, I don't have a letter to mail, but I, I, I'm one of the artists who work across the street. She said, yeah, I know you guys. And uh, I said, yeah, okay. I said, uh, I'm doing a painting and I really like for you to model for me. I think you would work perfectly. She's okay. I'm like, oh my God, that was too easy. I said, I said, well, you, you can stop by any time. Uh, is tomorrow okay uh, at lunch or something like that? I don't know. She said a little date, a time. And I said, oh, sure. So I went back across the street and told Keith what he was high-fiving. We was high-fiving each other. Like, what's <laughs> up, man? Um, and yes. And I got to use her in a couple of paintings. I got her, I've used her in other paintings of Dragon Magazine cover. Yeah. And right now that painting is in the Norman Rockwell Museum. No, is it the Norman Rockwell? Yeah. They got a show of fantasy art right now. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I got paperwork. I know where it's at. I have to look it up. It's so cool. But, it's, it, but uh, they wanted me to show that one. That's a show for two. It'll be gone for till sometime next year, and I'll get it back. But um, I used her in that one. It was a, a witch and a scarecrow. Um, Neat. Eyes of Autumn. And uh, and she was a witch in it. And she, she's a pretty witch, you know. But, she's yeah. great. Yeah. And we kept that painting because that's my little, little little boy, my son, and the yeah. girl, we knew her. 